Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Yes, we are glad you're with us today, and I get so excited. Oh, when I get a chance to do this, is to interact with you and share as much as we possibly can. It just makes my day. So sit back. Let's talk about thumpers and a whole bunch of other stuff. That's the kind of bull that they serve around here. Made way back in top of them hills where they yes. the Yes. The white boy. Here. Solomon's cut. And we're ready to go. Now, just bear with me. I'm going to go through this video from start to finish, hopefully without having to stop, with the exception of the few breaks I take in order to have a libation. Um, I'm going to leave the bloopers in on this one, so we'll see where this takes us. Uh, but uh, this one, is, it's necessary, I think, for me to enjoy a few libations along the way because this is a topic that is a little bit controversial, for lack of better words. Let's talk about thumpers. Thumper theory, thumper operation, thumper process, and really what does take place. Now, first of all, uh, I know that there is a good portion of the community that uses thumpers routinely, and you've got it figured out. This is probably not for you. Uh, there are a good, there is a good portion of the community that for the first time is going to use a thumper, uh, understanding exactly what's going on and how to overcome some of those challenges would be very helpful, okay? Uh, and for a good majority of the population, if I do my job correctly, which I hope, um, you'll understand that, in my opinion, uh, thumpers are an unnecessary additive into a system uh, that otherwise does a great job by itself. Okay? So let's try to just get rid of the, the mystique of what most people have seen throughout their distilling experiences, because anytime you see a movie, you see a picture, you hear someone talk about it, thumpers always come up. You know? So we misunderstand even what, what, is, what does a thumper actually do. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about, though, is the understanding of, no, let's do the thumper real quick, okay? Let's do that. Okay, let's go back in time, and we're going to try to figure out what the design of a thumper is. What, what is the purpose of a thumper, all right? Um, and, in, and, and in discussing that, we'll also discuss some of the aspects of a thumper. Okay, back in the woods, how many of you truly believe that our backwoods moonshiners in the hills and the mountains and Tennessee, Kentucky, Kentucky, Virginia, Georgia, all up, how many of you truly believe that they were running five, six gallon stills? Show of hands. It, you got my point, all right? Um, it's really counterproductive. You don't hide in the woods to run a five or six, ten-gallon still, you know? Uh, you're there for a reason. So, when we have a still, and let's say in mo uh, most cases, or in a lot of cases, we're looking at 350, 600 gallons. Uh, we're, we're looking at a pretty large volume, all right? And this would be a still with some sort of a connection capped to the top and what we would call a line arm. And a line arm is merely a connection point between the still itself and any other apparatus, whether that be a thumper, which we're getting ready to go to, or if that's directly to a worm. All right, that's what the line arm. And you'll notice that most of them are always built with about a three degree drop. And what is that for? it should come to you almost immediately. That's just in the event that uh, anything condenses in the line arm itself, that gravity drags it in the right direction. Okay? You don't want to push uphill. Just let it flow downhill. Now, underneath here, we have a bunch of logs. Normally, that was used with, was either logs or coal or some sort of a heat source. And um, later on, as things started to mature in the process, uh, propane was used, okay? Now, as we were heating this up, um, the challenge is, what is the boiling point of ethanol and water mixture? 
we you know we kind of know that. We know water boils at 212 and ethanol boils at 78 degrees Celsius or 173 point what somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, depending on which textbook you look at. But when you put them both together, they create a blend. It's called an azeotropic blend, okay? And it happens to be that once you do that, uh, in this particular case, the boiling point of both of them together is lower than the lowest one. So at about 171 or so is when this mixture starts to evaporate or starts to vaporize, all right? <laughs> now, if we were just running this and we were able to control the heat, all all well and good, okay? But the challenge we have here is that no one knew how many logs did it take, how many did you have to add to increase the temperature a few degrees, how many did you have to remove to drop the temperature a few degrees. So, so you see where the challenge was right away was immediately was how do we control temperature? It, it temp the solution to that was the thumper. So they had a large container and what they did was they inserted this line arm into the container all the way down to the bottom and then they extended the line arm back out the top again that went to the coil now this was known as a thumper and what happened was was your high pressure which is something we want to avoid we'll get to that high temperature vapor enters into the line arm and bubbles out the bottom and starts to rise. Now, as it does that, it cools. So what happens when that starts to cool and condense? When it gets to condensing temperature, it turns back into a liquid. Now, in this thumper, uh, many things were used. A lot of times it was just additional mash because it had some alcohol in it, but there were occasions when just regular water was used in there uh, in order to just cool it, immediately cool the steam down to a manageable temperature. Uh, and, but what happened? What happened to all of the ethanol that was being produced here in a vapor form and entering inside the thumper? Yeah, it was condensing along with the water that it drug with it because it was at a high temperature and a high pressure. Uh, and this started to fill up. Well, it would fill up only to a point to where the temperature in here is high enough in order for the vapor, for the ethanol to vaporize again. All right? That's where people get this idea of, well, it's a double distillation. Well, theoretically it is, but that's almost true. Well, or is it almost not true? I don't know, you figure that one out. But the point is, is that now this can only get so hot. I mean, the temperature inside the thumper can only raise to a point where the ethanol starts to vaporize again. Okay? And then, of course, it would exit your exit port in the form of a vapor and head towards the coil. And then you would condense it, coil, worm, whatever the other addition was to that. So week's good so far. Okay, and it's time. <sighs> okay, now that we've got that part under control, you see where we could just run the still by throwing a bunch of logs up underneath it, sometimes I like to say under beneath, under beneath it, uh, and just let that puppy run, okay? And we run it, and this is the method we use in order to maintain the temperature. Okay, now, we don't have that problem anymore, okay? We don't have that issue of temperature control anymore. Um, this is a system that works how efficiently does it work? It, it only works as efficient as the operator at this point, okay? Um, and the operator to balance uh, your system. No. So you'll see nowhere on here in a traditional still lined up with a thumper 
is there a thermometer anywhere? Everything is run traditionally based on output. Okay? And if you needed a little bit more heat, you added more logs. Uh, if you had too much heat, you just allowed that to run, and your heat would soon dissipate down and drop on its own because you're losing thermal energy constantly out of the thumper. Therefore, it balances, it sort of balances itself, okay? Are we so far so good? Good. Give me a second, let me erase this, and uh, I'll be right back. By the way, if you hear a little bit of burping going on in the background, that's that, uh, that corn mash, that 27 gallons I've got of delectable deliciousness uh, that's on its fifth day of uh, fermentation, slowing down. Uh, it, we're blessed because of the time of year here in Texas. It's kind of, the temperature's just about right. It's a steady 75, 76 degrees in here, and it doesn't take a whole lot to keep it that way. Uh, when, when we think about the vaporization point um, of water and ethanol together, um, what are we actually talking about? It, this is necessary to, to fully understand. It takes us a brief couple seconds to explain, but... We've got, let me do this. I'm going to draw a couple of, uh, this is an, we're going to draw some molecules, okay? Because it, it's helpful to understand this stuff from a, on a molecular level because it's necessary. Um, we have an oxygen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. And so what would this be? Yeah. H2O. Water, okay? Uh, and then we have... The same as we have another oxygen here, and this one has two hydrogen uh, atoms to it, uh, and we could have multiples all over the place. Okay, I mean, and of course there will be a whole bunch of them, uh, but uh, let's let's draw one more. There's one right there, and there's two hydrogen atoms. Okay, now the way this actually happens is water itself okay it's it, it kind of connects I mean there's there's a bond there's what they call a hydrogen bond um, and that bond takes uh, yeah takes place between the hydrogen and the oxygen okay so they're bonded um, and what happens is is that when there's enough kinetic energy now these things are moving all over the place that's a given okay but why does water stay water well, water stays water because of its kinetic energy and the amount of pressure on top of it. You see, because we have this layer of air, atmosphere, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, all that stuff, and these things are just sitting up here, and of course, they're providing pressure. And at standard atmospheric pressure, at standard temperature is 14.7 PSI, okay? So in order for one of these to escape, and to become a vapor, something has to happen. You have to over. You have, you have to. You have to accomplish two things. You have to increase the temperature, and then overcome the pressure. Uh, so you can do that a couple different ways. One thing you can do, because you know you can boil water at room temperature, if you reduce the atmosphere, is place this under a vacuum. Drop that atmospheric pressure down to a point and then water will boil at 70 degrees it'll just boil away because it doesn't have any pressure holding it down okay but one of these can break this hydrogen bond and this whole molecule can escape and escape as a vapor okay now it kind of begs the question well then why is it that which one will evaporate easier uh, water or ethanol. Let's do an ethanol molecule. And an ethanol molecule is an oxygen. Oh, God, I love this. A carbon, a carbon, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen, and well, there we go. There's one more hydrogen. Uh, and we always know that this is, uh, well, right off the bat, this would be, because there's a hydrogen, oxygen uh, atom here. We know that's an, al an alcohol itself. <laughs> um, and so let's draw another one. Oh, boy. These get to be a lot of fun.
Now, what is this known as? The, 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 of, this is ethanol, okay? Um, and it's chemical formula. Oh, there's there's a couple different ways that you can write this. Just it just pick the one that you think is the best. Okay, so it's let's do this. It's CH3. That's these. CH2, that's these, and OH. That would be correct. Okay. Okay, or that you can say C2. H one two three four five five O H Okay or we can call it C two H six O and all that is is just counting up the atoms, okay? Now in this particular case you see we still have we do have a hydrogen link uh from each of those molecules. And of course, in this particular case, let's say, for instance, we had water in here with it, okay? We had the mixture. First of all, let's cover why does, which one evaporates quicker? Well, we all know that ethanol will evaporate quicker because it has a lower boiling point. Why is that? Well, because most of this kinetic energy is dispersed across a larger molecule, okay? So it takes less energy to get this thing going and to break this bond and to overcome 14.7 PSI, all right? That's why that works. Uh, and of course, as you look at this, you'll have an oxygen here with, oh, they do this, a hydrogen and a hydrogen, and guess what? Yep, there's a bond in there too, okay? So you've got these things all over the place. Now that's basically what happens with molecules. So what is the important aspect here? The important thing is, is that pressure and temperature, energy, okay, kinetic energy or just temperature, uh, which will change the kinetic energy of a molecule or of an atom, um, uh, causes it to vaporize, all right? Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because when you add a thumper into your system, you are making a drastic change in one of those parameters. Which one? pressure. Yes, you're, you're making a drastic change in the pressure parameter of either pressure or temperature kinetic energy. Let me show you why. All right, I've written some, uh, I've, matter of fact, I left, I left the formulas uh, for those of you who want to really geek out, you know, and impress your friends, uh, the formulas for ethanol, the formula for water. Okay, um, now that this, I already, I pre-drew this. This is sort of like a really, really basic setup. All right. Uh, and first of all, we're going to consider this five gallons. All right. Now, when it comes to still, um, this is kind of sort of like guidelines on how to go about utilizing, and they're, they come in many different fashions. Okay. Um, my gosh, I've seen them where uh, they got some Chinese models out there. And there's nothing wrong with the Chinese model. Please don't take that the wrong way. Uh, it, you know, you've got the pot and you've got a uh, connector comes out here and it goes right down inside something that sits up here. And you got this that goes out. It goes into some sort of a condenser pot or something. Uh, but there are many, many different designs. They all do exactly the same thing. The biggest challenge with these on the Chinese stills that I've noticed that people have written in about is that this pipe doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, which kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, it then becomes what's known as a slobber box. Um, and the only thing a slobber box does is collect. In the bottom, it just collects any of the sludge left over that's been puked out, and it, but it allows the vapor to just transfer here. So they sell these under the name of Thumper, uh, but they really aren't thumpers. Hmm. Um, I'm going to probably wish I never said that, but it's the truth is the truth. Okay. Um, if you've got one and the pipe doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, it is not a thumper. Okay. All right. Um, so this is the basic setup. Anytime you utilize a thumper, this is a five gallon keg. Okay. 
your thumper should be at least one, about one third the size of your still. You follow me? So that would make, let's say for instance, this is a 10 gallon. It makes it a whole lot easier. If this is a 10 gallon still, this should be about a three gallon thumper. And we're going to explain why in just a moment. Uh, so if it was a five gallon still, it'd be like one and a half gallon thumper. All right. There you go. That's beer talking. Um, here, let's put, let's put our, our volume in here. Uh, we've got a volume of mash. And we're, you, whatever method you're using to heat uh, is perfectly okay with me. Okay. And you're heating this thing up. Um, the thumper itself, never fill the thumper more than two-thirds full. Okay? And there's a reason for that, too. So two-thirds would be about right here. Okay? Never fill it more than two-thirds full. A little bit less is even better. Uh, because here are the challenges. Two-thirds of a three-gallon uh, thumper is two gallons. And that's about 16 pounds. Why is that important? Uh, it, 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 the two gallons of water weighs a little bit over 16, but it's 16 pounds. So, right now, what we have is known as a closed system. And that is because this pipe is beneath the level of this liquid, which closes that system off um, and allows you to have what's known as back pressure. Um, and in fact, you need back pressure in order to operate a thumper. But from this point forward, it is an open system because it is open to the atmosphere. Okay? So we've got 14.7 pounds per square inch that's pushing down on top of this 16 pounds of water. All right. No, you don't add those together. That's not what it needs to overcome. But, Keep this in mind, is that as this, in, this pipe that's introduced in here, and this is the exit, this is where your bubbles come out, uh, your water pressure, your water, uh, whatever medium you have in your thumper is all the way up inside this pipe. And now you need to build up enough pressure, temperature and pressure, in order to force this water down so you have to displace that 16 pounds of water there is, there is a way to figure that out. It's not a full 16 pounds, but it's a substantial amount of water that you have to displace in order to push this level down in order for that to escape. And as they escape, those bubbles escape, what happens? Yes, the temperature difference from here to here is drastic. So that automatically condenses. And this will condense until, 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 okay, it'll condense until your thumper reaches a balance of temperature, okay, that is equal to the boiling point of ethanol. And then when that happens, all of this will start to vaporize and exit into your worm. So you see, that's how it works. Now, here are some challenges. Now, the reason why that we only fill these things to the level that we fill them, let's stop and think of what would happen. Um, what would happen if you filled it fuller? Well, if you fill it too full, fill it fuller. Eh. If you fill it too full, and then your condensed liquid that comes from your still into your thumper, because you're going to use the still in order to heat the thumper. Um, that would fill that up with a liquid and close it off. And then you wouldn't have any means by which vapor could escape into your worm. So you could have that challenge. All right. Um, could you? Good question. Well, can't you just heat up the thumper? Well, you could. But... If you heat up the thumper, you still got to overcome this pressure gradient in order for your still to introduce its vapor steam into the thumper. Now, what happens in here? 
And you see, I've written a bunch of stuff above for reference, okay? And you'll notice the very first one says zero. That really represents 14.7 PSI. We know that water boils at 212 degrees, and we use water in this example. Oh, if we had three PSI inside our still, now the boiling point, see, the water will not boil at 212. It boils at 221 degrees. See, so you've got to get the still hotter in order for that to pass through. Hmm. Now, depending on how much of a level you have in here, will make a difference on how much pressure is necessary in order to transfer your energy from one container to the next. Uh, if it's too much, and let's say for instance it requires 5 PSI, we look up on our chart, now your water would boil at 227 degrees, which is a, which is a, a spike, a stark difference between the standard atmosphere vaporization point of water. Now these are linear, okay? So when you think about that, if a water ethanol concentration, the increase between 212 and 227 is what, 15 degrees. So that means that your water ethanol mixture would have to be 15 degrees hotter in order to vaporize. Because why? Because you've increased the pressure. And if you remember the drawing we had before, you increase the pressure on top of those molecules to prevent them from escaping from a liquid state into a vapor state. See, see how this all makes this all makes sense when you put it in perspective and you try to understand well, what is actually happening in the very beginning and why, why does it escape as a vapor and what controls that? Again, pressure and kinetic energy being temperature. Now, pressure and temperature are proportionate, meaning when one goes up, so does the other, okay? When one goes down, so does the other. Keep that in mind because here is another drawback, uh, not a drawback, but something to really, really be attuned to when you run a thumper. Um, oh, by the way, where would you put the thermometer? Um, um, that's not a dumb question. It's, uh, it's, it's one that... I routinely get all the time. Well, where do I put the thermometer? Well, what I always say is once you add a thumper into your system, you've changed the entire design and makeup of the system. So putting a thermometer here doesn't help you at all because it doesn't tell you what's going on in here. And it really doesn't tell you much about what's going on in here. If you put a thermometer on the side, and you read a dial thermometer or a digital thermometer, the only thing this temperature tells you is what the temperature is in here. If you put a thermometer here, you get a better feel for what's taking place, but it's still not a direct measurement because of the lag between the time it takes this to heat up and start to vaporize. So therefore, thumpers don't necessarily have thermometers. Again, think back of what we described at the very beginning about why thumpers were originated in the first place. Okay? The primary tool used or indicator is its production level. And its production level is what is used in order to control the heat that goes into the still. Okay, see, but now we but we still have that lag between St initial still heat up, thumper balance, and then production level. So you're going to increase the time it takes to run it, and that's quite all right. It is on. It, it is with a stretch, a double distillation, because it's happening a second time, um, although it's not as clean as a double distillation. Um, uh, remember, higher temperatures, higher pressure, more force, uh, what happens whenever we have to increase the temperature? We always increase the potential for pushing tails. We push instead of allow vapor to rise. We push, remember? Um, and so, 
if you increase the amount of tails volume in your thumper, you increase the likelihood of early tails out of your worm. That's just a consideration, all right? Now, last but not least, if by chance you have a thumper, please, 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 always place a valve somewhere in line. Somewhere, a valve that you can shut off or that you can open up. Or that valve could actually be in the, ver in the lid. No, it couldn't. Oh, I have to take that back. It can't be in the lid. I'm just about to ready to tell you something wrong. Uh, or it can be in this lid. Or it could be in the top of the still itself. Right here. And the reason for that is, is that you've got one of these three options. One, two, and three. And the reason for those options are, is that remember, as temperature rises, pressure increases. You have two things going on here. You have an increase in temperature and you have a restriction that you have to overcome. Okay? So that means pressure's going to go up. All right? Now, how much pressure? Oh, a routine average will be anywhere from 4 to 7 PSI. And again, that all depends on volume inside your thumper. Um, what happens when you turn it off? Mm -hmm. Your turn. Yeah, yeah. You, you turn the heat off and the temperature starts to drop. Now, is, believe it or not, it's not really gradual either. Um, it's rather drastic at the very beginning and then it kind of levels itself off. But as it drops, when the temperature drops, the pressure drops, okay? And the pressure inside your container drops proportionately. Now, as that happens, because it's a closed system, you'll see... What happens is, is that your liquid level will fill back up in the pipe, and now it has to overcome that entire amount of liquid, which means it, in order for it to not crush, it has to actually suck all of this liquid back up through here and back into the still in order to balance in pressure with the atmosphere. What it's trying to do is it's trying to suck in air through here in order to balance the pressure inside the still itself. Without one of those, what are the results? I showed a picture quite a while ago of someone who had a 20-gallon, brand-new 20-gallon copper still. Uh, he shut it off, went and made a sandwich, and came back and had the prettiest copper crushed beer can uh, he had ever seen. And that's because the pressure had dropped because the temperature had dropped merely like five degrees, but the pressure inside had dropped proportionately and 14.7 PSI of atmospheric pressure, it created a vacuum, crushed the still. So that's the danger. So once you turn it off, just open up either one of these valves, wherever you've got that valve placed, in order for it to balance with the atmosphere as it cools. my two cents. So that is actually operating a thumper and understanding what happens at each phase of your thumper operation. If a thumper is for you, well then fine. Um, I would submit to you that removing the thumper, see there you go, yep, eraser. Oh. Removing the thumper entirely Removes the need for, first of all, any valves in order to balance pressure because this is now known as an open system. One single distillation, this is a pot still, one single distillation, if this was a reflux still where you had multiple distillations on separate plates, uh, this would still be an open system, so you should not have any, um, any, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you should not have any rise in pressure other than what would be naturally acceptable. And naturally acceptable pressure would be one to two PSI. And that's just based on temperature and restriction in flow into your worm 
causes a little bit of a back pressure, which is something that's easily to over, easily overcome because it doesn't build to a point to where it's a, restri a forced restriction that you have to overcome. So, removing a thumper removes a whole lot of complexity. Um, now, what are some of the uh, advantages of a thumper? Uh, the first one that comes to mind is, oh my God, the cool points. The cool points go way up because you get to show everybody you got a thumper. Uh, you may not know how you're running it, uh, but you got one, and that's always a good thing. Um, the second thing is, is trying to infuse certain flavors, um, and people will use a thumper to try to attempt to do that. Uh, and you can be successful, but it's always a hit or miss proposition. Um, challenges upon challenges upon challenges, because now you've got a different solution, okay, um, that may have a different boiling point. Um, so you may be creating more problems than you're trying to resolve. Not sure. All right. Until next time. Oh, yeah. Happy distilling.